This is the second episode of the series Hardware Hacking Tutorial, where we'll talk about the hardware hacking process based on information gathering of hardware and software from our device, building an emulation environment where to run interesting binaries, understanding how the device works, and then hacking the device and modify its firmware. In this episode, we will talk about one of the first steps in the hardware hacking process, and it is the finding the position of the WART interface. The WART interface is the serial console of our system, and we will explain also how it is so essential to find the position of the WART interface. And we will show how it is possible to find the WART interface using a very simple tool, like, for example, a multimeter. I am Valerio Di Giampietro, I have a background in digital electronics and in information technology infrastructure, and I wish to be your friendly Italian hacker neighbor willing to share with you tools and techniques for other hacking that I learned by myself hacking many devices. So, let's start! UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, and it is the serial interface of our device where to attach our serial console. It is essential in hardware hacking to find the position of the UART interface because in this way you can attach a terminal emulator and to see and you will be able to see what is printed on the serial console during the boot cycle. It is the similar information that is printed on your personal computer before the start of the graphical interface of your operating system. A terminal emulator attached to a word interface allows you to see what is printed on the serial console during boot. This allows you to understand what kind of bootloader you have in this version, what kind of operating system do you have in this version, information on the CPU is architecture instruction set, uh, often you have information on other peripherals, the amount of RAM that you have, the amount of the EPROM, often also how the EPROM is partitioned, and a lot more, uh, often also a lot more information, and also you can see what is printed on the serial console during the upgrade cycle, and if you want to modify the firmware, this can be a really useful information. Often it is also possible to interact with the serial console, interacting with the bootloader, or getting the login prompt for, from the operating system, and maybe also to login locally on uh, your device. There are professional equipment that have a, a standard serial interface according to the RS-232 standard. This means that they have a standard connector, usually a 25-pin connector or a 9-pin connector, and they also have standardized voltage level at each pin. <coughs> Logical zero in this case is between uh, 3 volts and 15 volts. Logical one is between minus 15 volt and minus 3 volt. And also each pin tolerates a shortage with any other pin of the interface without permanent damage. In this professional equipment, internally some driver chip is used to convert TTL logic level where 0 is 0 volt and 1 is at VCC to RS-232 levels. In the device we are interested in, usually the serial interface, the word interface, is included because it is used during the development phase and often it is also used for testing purposes. But there are no external connector and also there are no driver chip to, uh, to drive levels to the RS-232 standard level. So they have the internal logic level where 0 is 0 volt and 1 is VCC. In this case, we say that the UART interface uses the TTL transistor to transistor level logic. The UART interface in our device also have the minimum number of, of pins. Usually they have only ground, RX and TX, and sometimes the VCC pin as voltage reference. 
the RS-232 standard dictates a larger number of pins with some additional signals. Following the easiest path principle, we start searching on the internet to see if someone else has already found the position of the UART interface for our device. But in the case of our sample Linkem Gemtech router, I wasn't able to find anything. But if you search now, you will find a lot of information because what I found, I shared on the internet and also on my GitHub repository. Sometimes the serial headers are easy to find because they are clearly marked on the printed circuit board, like for example in this, uh, exa in this board that it is not our sample board, but in our device that we are using as a sample device, uh, we can see that we don't have any uh, headers marked as, ser as word interface. If we are not able to find anything on internet and if we are not able to find the serial headers with label on our printed circuit board, we have to find potential serial headers candidates. Usually they are three or four, fin or four pins. Uh, they are the pins R, ground, TX, RX and optionally VCC as a reference. We can use a multimeter to identify potential serial headers candidates because it's easy to identify ground and VCC the TX pin usually has a pull-up resistor, the RX pin can have a pull-up resistor or can be an high impedance input. Later we will see how to use a multimeter to find the word interface in our sample uh, router. If we have identified the system on a chip device and if we have his datasheet, we can identify the position of the UART interface in easy pin and try to follow the PCB traces to find the UART connector. But this is usually almost impossible because quite often the system on a chip has pins below the package and it is impossible to identify this pin on the printed circuit board. And also when this is possible, often we have PCB that are multi-layer boards, it is very, very difficult to follow traces in a multi-layer board. We can also use tools like Joytagulator to identify the word position. Joytagulator is a fantastic tool. It is a board with a lot of pin headers that we can attach to potential UART or Joytag pin candidates and it will run some automatic scanning logic and will identify the pinout of our UART interface or the pinout of our JTAG interface. Later, we will see how to use JTAGulator to identify the uh, pinout of our UART interface on our sample router. We can also use an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer to identify the TX pin because for sure during a boot something will be written on the serial console and the TX pin will oscillate between 0 and BCC. But maybe this is a bit overkill. First of all, we have to identify potential serial headers candidates on our sample router board. We can see that there is an unlabeled connector with four pins that seems the perfect UART candidate. So we can try to use a multimeter to try to identify and to understand if this is the, our UART interface. We start with the router board powered off. We know that according to the datasheet, our 74HC164 chip has the pin 7 at ground and the pin 14 at VCC. We can confirm that these metal grids on the board are connected to ground with the voltage measurements. In this case, now that we have found that these are ground, we can attach the black multimeter probe that is ground to the metal grid. With the board powered off, we select resistance measurements on our multimeter. And we can start measuring resistance against the ground of each pin on our potential UART connector. And we can see that pin 1 has about 
30 kilo ohm against the ground. Pin 2 is about 5 kilo ohm against the ground. Pin 3 is a very high out of scale resistance against the ground. And P4 is at ground, so probably pin 4 is the ground on this connector. We can repeat the same measurements, but it is time against VCC. We can take the pin 14 of the 74HC164 as VCC reference, and we can see that pin 1 has zero ohm resistance against VCC, so probably pin 1 on this connector is VCC. Pin 2 has about 30 kilo ohm against VCC. Pin 3 has a very high out of scale resistance against VCC. A pin 4 has about 30 kilo ohm against VCC. We can now power up the device and take voltage measurements. On each pin of his connector. So we switch the multimeter to the voltage measurement and connect the black probe to ground and start taking measurements on these pins on this connector. We can see that pin 1 is at 3.3 volt or logical 1. Pin 2 is at about 3.3 volt or logical 1. Pin 3 is also at about 3.3 volt or logical one, and pin 4 is at 0 volt. With this voltage measurement and the resistance measurement that we already taken, we can confirm that pin 1 is BCC on this connector and pin 4 is ground. We know that during boot a lot of information will be printed on the serial console. This means that the TX pin will oscillate between 0 and 1 or between 0 and VCC. So we can take measurements on pin 2 during the boot to see if we are able to spot something with a multimeter. So we can take measurements on pin 2 during the boot and we can see that it oscillates between 3.3 volt and some lower voltages. The multimeter will make an average measurements over a few hundreds milliseconds. For this reason, the TX pin will oscillate between 3.3 volt and lower voltages. If we take the same measurement during boot on pin 3, we can see that the pin 3 remains at about 3.3 volt without oscillating. This means that probably the pin 2 is the TX pin and the pin 3 by exclusion is the RX pin, but we can confirm only attaching a, a serial emulator to this or to this port. To confirm that we have correctly identified the pinout of the UART interface on this board, we have to connect this UART interface to our PC using a terminal emulator. To do so, we need a USB TTL serial adapter as the one shown here. This DTL serial adapter should be able to operate at 5 volt as a logical one or 3.3 volt because if we attach a TTL serial adapter at, at 5 volt to our board and if our board is 3.3 volt we can damage our board and vice versa if we attach a 3.3 voltage TTL serial adapter to a 5 volt board we can damage the TTL serial adapter. In this case we have a TTL serial adapter where we can select 5 volt or 3.3 volt. In our case our sample router uses 3.3 volt so, so we select 3.3 volt on this serial adapter. We connect ground from the adapter to ground of the board. Then we connect the TX of the adapter to the RX of the board because what the adapter will transmit, the board will receive. Then we connect the RX of the adapter to the TX of the board. We don't connect the VCC pin because it's not needed and it is used only as VCC reference. 
Then we connect the adapter to the PC with an USB cable. Now we are ready to fire our terminal emulator. We are on Linux and we have to know the name of the device adapter. To do so, uh, we can do an LSUSB as a root to check for USB devices and then we can execute an ls-lart slash dev to list of the, all of the device files and the newer files with these options are at the end of the list. In this way, it's easy to understand the device name of the serial adapter because this should be one of the last. Because we just attached the DTL serial adapter to the USB port and the device file was just created. In this case, the device file is TTYUSB0. It is also important to note that to access this device on Linux, we must be root or better, we must belong to the dial-out group. On Windows, the device name would be something like COM4, COM5, COM6 and so on. We can now fire our preferred terminal emulator, PuTTY in our case, but one problem is to know the baud rate or the speed of the serial interface. We could use a logic analyzer or an oscilloscope attached to the TX pin to measure the length of one bit or one or of one byte to understand the speed of this interface. But following the easiest path first, it is much easier just to try one of the common uh, speed speed of this interface. The most common baud rate on modern embedded devices is by far 150,200 bits per second. The other popular speeds are 9,600 bits per second or uh, 57,600 bits per second or 38,400 bits per second or 19,200 bits per second. All other speeds that you can see on this chart are rarely used. So we try the most popular speed and bingo, it's the correct one. Anyway, if we put a wrong speed, no problem. We will simply see gibberish on the terminal or nothing. If we power cycle the router and set our terminal emulator to save, save everything on a log file, we can see what is printed to the serial console during the boot cycle. And as you can see, it is a lot, a lot of information and a lot of useful and interesting information. Another possibility to more easily identify the pinout of the UART interface is to use a tool like JTagulator. JTagulator is an open source hardware that is able to use some scanning logic to automatically identify the pinout of the UART or the JTAG interface. It has 24 programmable IO pins that can be attached to the JTAG or UART pin candidates, and it runs some automatic scanning logic to identify the pinout of the interface. Obviously, the interface pins must be included in the pin candidates attached to JTagulator. It is also able to identify the speed of the serial interface. This board will be attached to a PC using a USB cable and it will be powered on by this uh, USB cable. It will be controlled by a terminal emulator like PuTTY. You can find this board on various sources, for example on Adafruit for about $175. You can also find this board on other sources, maybe also with the lower price. Anyway, being an open source project, you are able to find on internet, and you will find the link below, the schematics, the PCB drawing, below materials, and you can build this board by yourself. First of all, we connect the JTagulator board to a PC using the USB interface and this will power up the board. We have to use a terminal emulator like PuTTY to talk to the JTagulator interface. We can type H for help to print available commands 
and we can see that we have three types of commands. General commands to set the target system voltage, to read all channels as input or to write all channels as as output. Then we have commands to identify the UART port or talk directly to the UART from our terminal emulator. And we have commands to identify the JDAG interface pinout. We will see in much more detail this part on the next episode of this hardware hacking tutorial series. Now we can connect the JTAGulator board to our router board. First of, of all, we power up the router. We will use these cables with female female connectors to connect our JTAGulator to the router's connector. First of all, we connect the JTAGulator ground to the router board ground. Then we connect the JTAGulator channel 1 to the router's connector pin 1. Then the JTAGulator channel 2 to the router's connector pin 2. And at the end the JTAGulator channel 3 to the router's connector pin 3. Now we can go to our terminal emulator. We can press H for the list of commands and then we can press V to set up the target voltage at 3.3 volt because our router use 3.3 volt. This must be done before any other command. Then we press U to enter the UART pinout identification menu. Then we can press again H for help about this menu and then we can press U to identify the UART pinout. As a text string to output on the serial interface to do this kind of test, we accept the default that it is carriage return. As a starting channel we enter 1 because we, start, we started connecting channel 1 to pin 1. As ending channel we enter 3 because we connected 3 channels 1, 2 and 3. We accept the default of ignoring non-printable characters and then we press the space bar to start scanning. It will take a few seconds to do some automatic scan to identify that the TX data pin is channel 3, RX data pin is channel 2, and that the serial speed is 150,200 bit per second. This confirms what we have found with the multimeter. So we have successfully identified the UART position and pinout on our sample router board. If you have found this video interesting, please subscribe, help this channel grow, share this video with your friends interested in hardware hacking and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when new episodes will be released and don't forget to click the thumbs up icon. And also I will appreciate your feedback in the comments below, feedback but positive or negative. Please tell me what you think about this series, about this episode, what kind of suggestion do you have for me? Thank you for watching, see you again on this channel.